So antiarrhythmias. There are four classes. Class one, two, four. All right. Two of them work on your nodal tissue, and two of them work on your non-nodal tissue. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about nodal tissue first. This is going to be a great recap from our last video. I'm going to write down how your nodal tissue depolarize. I want you to pause the video, pause the video, and show me. See if you can write out all the stages, all the little, all the little ion channels opening, all the ion channels closing, all that stuff. All right. We learned that from our last video, so hopefully you were paying attention. So let's pause the video, see if you can do that for me, okay? Give you a second. Give you a second. <clears throat> All right. All starts in your cell membrane. We said that calcium, it's not calcium. We said that potassium likes to, likes to leave, makes it very negative, and then we said things like sodium and calcium likes to enter and make the cell positive. All right. But you usually start at a negative potential. But lucky for us, we have these, these funny sodium channels, right? The LF channels, LF channels. Funny sodium channels that will let sodium leak in. And so you get really, really unstable and creep toward that threshold. And sometimes you can spontaneously, spontaneously depolarize. That's what makes no, no tissue so important. They can spontaneously depolarize, right? And when they depolarize, they will recruit, they will recruit calcium, long-acting calcium channels in, and eventually that calcium will close and then potassium will efflux and turn it back negative and you kind of restart the cycle all over again. Hopefully you drew that out. Hopefully you kind of remember, it's nothing new. What were the phases of this? This was that confusing part, right? So this was phase four, phase zero, phase three, four, zero, three, four, zero, three. Okay. Some new information, some new information. This slope caused by your leaky, funny sodium channels is very, very important. You can imagine if the slope is very high, then it'll be easy to depolarize. You depolarize very, very quickly. And so if you have a lot of these leaky sodium channels, then you can depolarize very quickly and that increases your heart rate. If you have not a lot of them, then you're not gonna have that leakage, right? You're gonna have minimal leakage. You're not gonna reach that threshold. You're gonna have a very, very low slope, a very, very low slope. And that makes it very difficult to depolarize, right? So you have a low amount, you have a low slope, that actually decreases your heart rate. That actually decreases your heart rate. This is important because the way we can control our heart rate is through a sympathetic fight or flight response, right? We can increase our heart rate by doing that and that increases your heart rate by increasing your leaky, funny sodium channels. So right, sympathetic. And then your parasympathetic, your rest and digest, decreases your heart rate, lets you rest. And it can decrease your heart rate by decreasing these sodium channels. Here. Just something to keep in mind, okay? So finally, let's talk about antiarrhythmia. all right? We're kind of beating around the bush, let's finally talk about it. You have two classes that work on your nodal tissue. You have class two, I don't know what I'm writing here. Class two, and these are beta blockers. You know, these are things that end in, oh lol. These are beta blockers. We said your sympathetic system wants to increase your heart rate. And it does that by acting on beta-1 receptors of the heart, all right? And that will increase your LF channels, increase your slope and make it depolarize quicker, increase your heart rate, all right? It will also increase calcium. Calcium and calcium helps you depolarize, increases your heart rate. Also, calcium is used in muscles to contract, so it increases contractility. Contractility. If you know that, then you know why we would give class two beta blockers. If we can block all this activity and we can slow the heart rate, we can slow the arrhythmia, we can slow the contractility. That's how beta blockers work. So if you block it, you slow heart rate. 
you slow the slope of these funny channels. Sometimes they call it the slope of phase four because that's where your sodium channels work. So slow phase four. And contractility. How does it look? Well, if you reduce the amount of sodium channels and you lower that slope, so that slope is much lower. That didn't sound nice. <laughs> much lower, all right? And kind of looks like this. So it's slower, it's more gentle. That's how it looks like now. That's class two, the second class that works on nodal tissue. It's gonna be class four. Class four is gonna be your calcium channel blockers. Where's calcium used? Calcium is used to further depolarize, right? Further depolarize, that's phase zero. So if you block this, if you block these channels, then it'll slow things down. It'll slow things down. So slow calcium, AKA phase zero. Your sodium, your leaky sodium channels are the same, so the slope here is gonna be the same, same, but here, where calcium takes part, it's gonna slow things down, all right? Slow things down. That's how it looks like there. Now there are two types of calcium channel blockers. You have your dihydropyridine, which work on your vessels, and you have your non-dihydropyridines that work on your heart. These are like your wrapping mills. These are the ones we're talking about in this video, all right? These are the ones that work on your heart, so know that they are the non-dihydropyridines, all right? All these things work on your nodes, that's your SA node and your AV node, so if it prolongs your AV node, if it prolongs your AV node, prolong AV node, then that means it prolongs your PR interval, right? Fancy way of saying this is that it prolongs your effective refractory period. Basically, the time it takes for each beat to happen. We just said it slows down your heart rate, so of course it's gonna make each beat take longer. So this is a fancy way of saying it, so don't get confused if you see it on an answer choice, okay? These are the two classes that work on your nodal tissue. Let's talk about the two classes that work on your non-nodal tissue. Can you remind me what your non-nodal tissues were? That'd be your bundle of his, your Purkinje fibers, and also just your regular myocytes. Just your regular myocytes, like the myocytes that's found in your ventricles. Non-nodal. So your bundle, Purkinje, and the myocytes of your ventricles, right? Let's talk about how they depolarize in the first place. You know what I'm gonna ask you? I want you to pause the video. Draw it out. Draw all the phases, all the steps, all the ion channels opening and closing and all that stuff. Hopefully you can remember. If you can do that, then you're in really good shape because uh, this whole arrhythmia talk, this whole heart conductance talk is a commonly tested things that students struggle with. So hopefully you can do this. Pause the video, do that for me. I'll give you a second. All right, let's get started. Draw this out so many times I can do it cold. We said that you start at a negative potential, but here your, your non-nodal tissues don't have that leaky sodium channel, so it never creeps up the threshold. It just kind of stays there and just kind of waits there for a signal, like a loof, until it finally gets a signal, and then it'll depolarize, right? What causes it to depolarize? Is it calcium? No, it's not calcium. Hopefully you remember it's sodium. It reaches a point where the sodium channel shut off and then potassium will leave, potassium will leave, and help depolarize the cell help depolarize the cell. But at this point, calcium will also open and kind of balance it and you get this plateau, right? You get this plateau. Eventually calcium will close and then potassium is left unopposed and you will repolarize. And the cycle starts all over again. Do you remember the phases? First phase was zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four.
tour. That's very messy, but hopefully you can kind of follow along, okay? Hopefully you can follow along. Now, the two classes that work on non nodal tissues are going to be class one and class three. Class one, we'll start with first. Class one are your sodium channel blockers. That's important because sodium is like the main player here, right? It's a special one. So it makes sense that this works on non nodal tissue. You actually have three subclasses. So you have 1A, 1B, 1C, which kind of makes things confusing. But all of them work on sodium. All of them work on sodium. When you work on sodium and you block sodium, when you block sodium, then you kind of prolong this depolarization. You kind of prolong this depolarization. So now it looks kind of like that. Okay, so all right, prolong phase, is that phase zero? Prolong sodium, aka phase zero. But we have three different classes because not only do they work on sodium, but they also work on potassium to differing degrees. 1A, slows potassium efflux, slows efflux. Slows it, right. makes it more difficult for its efflux. And by slowing it down, you get a really, really long action potential. Your ventricles will contract and contract and stay there because it's slow until it can finally relax, until it can finally relax. So this actually prolongs your QT. Prolongs your QT. There are a couple of drugs that you should know by a side effect. All right, there's procainamide, which causes drug-induced lupus. Do you remember the specific antibody for a drug-induced lupus? Pause the video, tell me, tell me what that is. That's antihistone. All right. You can have quinidine, which causes headaches and tinnitus. Okay, so, so it's more important to kind of recognize a drug by a side effect. That's 1A. 1B doesn't slow the efflux, actually hastens potassium efflux. Hastens potassium efflux. Right. I'll use a different color hastens it, makes it leave quicker. And so you actually shorten the action potential. You make it shorter, shorter, shorten action potential, shorten action potential. And this is best used post heart attack, post MI. Best used post MI. So you can remember best with 1B. And then lastly, you have class 1C, which has no effect on, on potassium. No effect on potassium. You just need to know that class 1C, C for contraindicated post MI. It's just a very toxic drug, okay? So you don't give it post MI. So just a recap 1A slows potassium efflux and prolongs QT. 1B hastens efflux. Best used post MI. And then 1C has no effect on efflux. Don't use post MI. Don't use post MI. That's class one. Second class is gonna be class three. Class three. Class threes are gonna be your potassium channel blockers proper. All right, these are things that actually really, really strongly work on your potassium channel. So what does that do? Well, let's draw it out. It doesn't affect your sodium channel, so your sodium channels look the same, all right? And your potassiums will start to open. And we see that at this time your calcium channels also open and kind of balance and you get this plateau. Well, if you block potassium, if you block potassium, 
then you don't have that balance, right? You just have calcium, and calcium will pull it up. So you don't actually have a plateau. You kind of have this raise, but eventually calcium will close, and then you have unopposed potassium. However, you have slower blocked potassium, so it's gonna prolong this potassium efflux. And now it looks kind of like that. Now it looks kind of like that. So this can prolong action potential and QT. Okay. There's one drug that they really, really like, and that's amiodarone. They like this because it has class one to four action. They also like it because it's very, very toxic. It's literally toxic from your head to your toes. It can deposit in your eyes, damage your eyes, it can deposit in your brain, cause neuro um, deficits, it can deposit in your skin, cause discoloration. It's about 40% iodine, so it can deposit into your thyroid, cause hypothyroid, hyperthyroid. It can destroy your lungs, cause pulmonary fibrosis. It can destroy your liver, called, cause hepatotoxicity. So, destroy eyes, brain, skin, thyroid as it's 40% iodine. Destroys your lungs causing pulmonary fibrosis. Destroys your liver causing hepatotoxicity. That's a lot of information. What's important is asking how would they ask this on the USMLE? I mean, that's, that's why you're here, right? The way to ask it is they give someone a meter right? and then they ask you, what do you monitor? What do you monitor? Well, you're gonna monitor long QT for things like torsade point and V-fib. You're gonna monitor all these side effects, all right? So for your thyroid, you're gonna do your thyroid function test. For your pulmonary fibrosis, you're gonna do your pulmonary function test. For your liver, you're gonna do your liver function test. So look in your answer choices for these three things to monitor if they give the patient a meterone. Good. Our last drug, and we'll be all done, we'll be all done, I promise, is adenosine. Adenosine is a miscellaneous drug. Whether you have nodal tissue or you have non-nodal tissue, they all repolarize the same potassium leaves. They all repolarize the same potassium leaves, right? Adenosine increases potassium leaving efflux increases that so sharply that your heart stops beating and that stops the arrhythmia also stops your heart so you get chest pain you get this sense of impending doom because you feel like you're about to die so stops heart you should know that there are some adenosine blockers that make adenosine a little less potent adenosine antagonist and these include things like coffee. Doesn't coffee make your heart beat? Yeah. Instead of stopping your heart, doesn't it make your heart beat? That's why it's an antagonist. Also, theophylline, which we talked about in our asthma segment, okay? That does it for arrhythmias, okay? You should know this pretty well because it's commonly tested. It's a little bit difficult. If you need to rewatch this a few times, by all means, Hope it clarifies some things. Thanks for watching.